So, Mike Reynolds, stoked to be here with you today on Kanawa Island in Indonesia, where we're building earthships, and um, so glad we could take the time to get together, and, and really, I want to hear a little bit about your story, and also, obviously, the earthship story, and really get into some of the technology and how we're actually, how these things are built for people who, you know, have maybe seen them or maybe haven't seen them, and this is the first time they're really looking at you and this concept. So, thanks so much for taking the time. It's great to be connected. Great. Right on. So what I'd love to hear about first is can you just, I mean, we have this beautiful earthship in the background that is just being built or still being built and you're creating these things. What's the, what's the concept? What is, a, what is an earthship in a nutshell? What, what, what are we really talking about here? Well, we call it an earthship because it comes in our minds, it's like a vessel to sail on the earth. Uh -huh. uh, like a vessel to sail on the sea, a vessel to sail in space. This vessel sails on the earth in a very similar way. It doesn't need, you know, a, a ship in space doesn't have infrastructure that's hooked back to the earth, some umbilical cord or something. It has to capture everything for human sustenance on its own. So that's the concept of an earthship. It encounters the phenomena of the planet to deal with what we call the six things that all of humanity has to deal with in every circumstance, in every city, village, country around the world and that is everybody needs water, sure. everybody needs comfortable shelter, preferably without consuming fuel, yep. everybody needs electricity for all of our stuff, cell phones and computers and lights and pumps and whatever. Mm -hmm. Everybody makes sewage, so we have yeah. to have something to do with sewage. Everybody makes garbage, so we have to have something to do with garbage. And everybody eats food. You can't have life without those six things being addressed. Mm -hmm. If you miss any one of them, life gets miserable. You know, imagine life without water. Imagine yeah. life without, and this happens a lot around the world, imagine life without sanitary treatment of sewage, mm. cholera, everything happens. Mm. So you have to address those six things and the governments aren't doing it. They're building nuclear power plants, they're dumping sewage into bays and rivers and streams and whatever. The governments are not doing it adequately. So we're saying, okay, we can do it. We can do it in groups of 60 to 100 people or individually, and, and we make this vessel do all of those things. Mm -hmm. And it, then we bring in the ingredient of people, and they, <clears throat> they start to understand how this works, and they want to continue with this direction of life, one, because it's more secure. Mm. You know, you don't need to... Like, imagine the people in Japan, for instance, that were dependent on massive amounts of electricity and all of a sudden the nuclear power plant melted down and now they're on some kind of a brownout basis and minimal uh, limited and still polluting and ruining the whole northern hemisphere. So people feel more secure with using less power. I mean, we got enough power here. To ch we charge our cell phones, we charge computers, we run pumps, we run lights. Uh, what else do you need? And so we don't have to have electricity to heat or cool because the building stays cool. And uh, so it's, it's making a vessel. An earthship is simply a vessel that encounters the phenomena of the planet to provide sustenance for people. Wow, fantastic. I'd love to hear a little bit more about how the earthship actually handles those six things, those crit critical things. Before we do that, I'd love to get a bit of the backstory because this is the bit that I'm, I'm truly fascinated and curious about of how this all came about. Well, it came about in little doses for 50 years. You know, I, I graduated from architectural school. I went to New Mexico. I saw a news show with Walter Cronkite and uh, this other guy, Charles Caralt, on the road doing video. Mm -hmm. And Walter did a piece on, uh, uh, he did a piece on beer cans being thrown all over the streets and highways and national parks and everything. And he said, we're going to have a problem with garbage in the future. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, sure enough, maybe he did. And the Charles Garolf guy, I think, did a piece on clear-cutting timber mm -hmm. in the Northwest. And the clear cutting of timber has caused, uh, you know, they, they do it for housing, but it's caused uh, erosion. Mm -hmm. And when they clear cut timber, they seriously 
uh, cut into our oxygen supplies on this planet. And they predicted a problem with, with CO2 in the future. This mm -hmm. was in the early 70s. Wow. And of course, now we've got a major garbage problem. We've got a major CO2 problem. Yep. But that newscast started me as a young architectural graduate thinking in that direction. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, why cut trees to make housing? Why don't I make housing out of the cans that people don't want? Yep. So I started making beer can houses. And I was called an idiot. I was called incompetent. You know, they, but I made some beer can houses and I actually got show only permits for them. And, and then I looked around and saw other garbage and I looked around and there, the news was talking about energy crisis. And so I was already using garbage to build with. So I discovered that I could build with automobile tires rammed with earth because their tires are indigenous to the entire planet. Sure. And that would create thermal mass that would stabilize temperature adding physics to the equation and uh, would keep buildings stably temperatured uh, if you're admitting or, or not admitting sun and yep. you're tuning in to the temperature of the earth. And nice. so it just added one thing at a time and now uh, in recent history people saying the next world wars are going to be fought over water. Uh -huh. Well water comes from the sky. Why are we fighting over water? So we catch like this building during the rainy season catches enough water for two people to live here for four months without mm. any other rain. Wow. And then a way that it does that is the sewage system. Okay. The shower water goes yep. into rubber lined cells that go all the way around the building okay. and grow food and grow plants. And it recirks. So your shower water is recirking around the building all day long until you flush your toilet. And when you flush your toilet, the pump goes into that and flushes your toilet with your recirc shower water. So you're flushing your toilet with yesterday's shower, but it's been recirced and recirking it the when, the, when, the, when the plants suck up that water, they spit out oxygen. And so the water is getting oxygenated wow. by the plants and the plants are getting nurtured by the water. So it's like you're, you're basically cutting your water use in half really more than in half because you're not having to water these plants because your shower is watering. Them. Yes. And so you're, and then that tunes in to the production of food. Right. So the whole thing is kind of interrelated like the systems of your body are interrelated. Like your nervous system, your digestive system, your circulatory system, they all, they yeah. all work together. Sure. Not one of them is all isolated all by itself. Mm. As a matter of fact, your body is a a product of the systems mm. that that make it a body. Yeah. And it's not like your body was designed to look good and then they shove systems in it. <laughs> you know, your body is nothing but a bunch of systems. That's yep. what these buildings are. They're just a bunch of systems mm. that take care of people in wow. a way that doesn't destroy the planet. Wow. So we've got the water going around and then you said when you flush your toilet, then the sewage comes. So what, then what happens? Well, when you flush your toilet, it goes into these botanical cells. Mm -hmm. There's a pump in there, and it sucks up that water to flush the toilet with. And then it goes back in to a, a, an anaerobic processor, like a septic tank, that turns everything into liquid, and then that same liquid goes back into the loop. Wow. So everything, every bit of liquid waste from, from the people living here is going into 100 feet of planter rubber lined, circul circulating around the building all day long whenever the sun's out. And that circulation is cleansing it just like a stream. And it's run with a little solar pump. Yeah. And whenever you need it for flushing the toilet, you dip into it and put it right back. And so we're constantly making more and more charged uh, water in these cells so that these meager plants that we got started growing here now, they're going to go crazy over the next few months yeah, wow. and just have all the water they need. And it, we've seen it before. We have, a, we have this system in a, in a desert circumstance in New Mexico, yep. cold desert. We're at 7,000 feet. Wow. So you walk in off the cold, dry desert where it's so cold that your nose inside your nose is freezing. You walk in a door and there's parakeets and bananas and, and tilapia and waterfalls from this system. It's a botanical gardens. No heating, no nothing but but no you know no electricity from power grids or anything. But it's a jungle. 
Wow. Now here you don't have to worry about it being cold, so you can just make this jungle. But what we're saying is the sewage system makes the jungle. In other words, the presence of people on this planet can add to the rainforest rather mm. than take away the rainforest. Yeah, we, if nice. we do it right, every, every day that people live, the rainforest grows. Yeah. But here, at this point in time, every day that humans are alive on this planet, the rainforest diminishes. Mm. And so we're looking to, produce, to, to demonstrate a way uh, of people becoming a, an agent that makes the planet better. Mm -hmm. And the best analogy I have for that is trees. You never hear anybody say there are too many trees, but you hear lots of people say there are too many people. Too many humans, the reason so. they say there are too many, they never say there are too many trees is because trees have become such a part of the planet that they really are the planet. Yeah, sure. So why couldn't people be the same way? Yeah. What a beautiful thought, what a lovely idea for sure. There's lots of people you know, concerned about the population explosion and all this kind of thing. Well, the planet could handle 10 times as many people if they were all nurturing it yeah. rather than cutting away the yeah, rainforest. Sure. So we're just making buildings that unconsciously almost do that. We're yeah. making, we're, you know, a lot of people ride a vessel in space or in, on a ship or whatever and aren't really aware of how it works. So our first thing is to make these vessels available and affordable to everybody on every financial strata mm. so that even if they're not conscious, they're still happy because it's taking care of them Perfect. for free. The Perfect. money factor. Yeah. You know, you got no utility bills in one of these buildings. Sure. Like, ever. Ever. You got, we have two bedroom, two bath with a garage buildings in, in the cold desert of New Mexico. The total annual utility bill year after year after year turns out to be 120 bucks. Total <laughs> annual utility bill. And that's for Amazing. some gas to cook with sure. if you must cook with gas. We cook with solar and you make it zero then. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, and, and also with all these jungles and all the food growing, you can graze. I mean, I do, mm. I do that in New Mexico a lot. I just walk around to two or three of the buildings and graze. And that's all I eat. Pick some bananas. Pick, pick some, some bananas. Yeah. Pick some strawberries. Pick some greens. As a matter of fact, that gets into a whole other thing, which I may be playing with here. Yeah. Um, we start to explore, like this plant that grows like crazy all by itself. We'll take those leaves, we'll look up the name of that plant. These vines? We'll, yeah, yep. and we'll find out what's, what it's got. Is it edible? And it could be that that plant is edible. Hmm. And we just start eating it. In other words, we don't grow what we eat. Yeah. We eat what grows. Eat what grows. And Beautiful. then you're, like, I've, a perfect example of that is the, is the Japanese introduced a plant called kudzu okay. to the U.S. Uh, for whatever reason, and it's a vine, and people hate it because it takes over forests. It just it grows really fast, really easy, and it just absolutely chokes out forests. Huh. So, when you're eating what you grow, when you're not dependent on, uh, when you want to not be dependent on boats bringing food over and whatever, sure. Uh, and in a, in any circumstance, yeah. If you want to produce food, you know you can produce tomatoes and cucumbers and all this stuff, and you have to grow them, and they're not going to keep up with you and keep you alive. You need mm. a plant that is aggressive on its own, that can grow so fast it'll attack you in the night. <laughs> and the kutsu is that way. So we're sure. introducing kutsu to every one of the Earthship gardens inside it, you right. know if it got loose on the desert it'd just die because there's not enough water yeah, or anything sure. for it but inside it takes over and it's got leaves in the in the in these botanical cells it's real happy it's got leaves that big around yep and you just go and and they taste pretty good and they're medicinal they're nutritious uh you Perfect. could live on it right and it can keep up with your appetite nice so we're looking at actual things that people call bad. How do we eat weeds? Yeah. yeah. And, and you know, you look up the definition of weed. Yeah. And it's an it, all it says in Webster's is it's an unwanted plant. Oh. So if you didn't want a watermelon, it's a weed. Yeah, you sure. Know? So every plant, in my opinion, I want every plant because I want green, I want the oxygen, I want the food. Almost every plant is edible or medicinal. Yeah. So whenever I get to an area, I look at what's growing. Mm and see if that, what grows by itself and happy and wild, 
and I add that to tomatoes and watermelons and yeah, stuff. Well, I'll still grow the things I like, but yep. but I, if I if it comes down to staying alive, I want to know what my options are. Yeah, of course, it's fantastic. I've got this idea that um, you know we take take this guy or this family, and he's living in the city, he's living in the suburbs, and he's got to drive his car that's burning fossil fuels to his job, you know, that for the most part he hates, to make money that's made up. Right, to impress, to buy stuff that he doesn't need, to impress people that he doesn't like. And he's got the mortgage and the education for the kids and college expense and all this different stuff. There's like, there's a lot of stress in mm -hmm. that way of living. And so we come to him and say, hey, you know, do you hear about the plastic in the ocean? Do you hear about the deforestation? Do you hear about the, you know, all the landfill issues, all the major, you hear about the CO2, all these major issues facing humanity. And that guy, okay. he, well, what's he going to do? Because he's in this city, he's in this structure. So I, I, kind of, I kind of look at it, and, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on this, but I, I reckon that the major problems that are facing, they're not actually personal. They're structural. Because in that structure, there's not a lot that that guy can do. And maybe he cares and maybe he doesn't, but if we take him and put him in an earthship, in an earthship community with 60 to 100 people in a village, in an Eve village, he might still be an asshole and not care at all. But now just by being here, he's part of the solution for humanity and the planet yeah, the rather than part of the problem. gravity of the situation puts him in orbit, yeah. basically. And yeah, that's, that's the thing. We, we don't want to go around preaching to people about ecology. We want, to, we want to provide logic that makes it so this is their best choice. Yeah, nice. And when you, when you live in a building, you know, we're also, you notice these buildings are fairly simple. Sure. Uh, yeah, I mean, you can make luxurious ones, but... Uh, when you live in a building that has no heating bill or cooling bill, yeah, that's that's money that you don't have to have. When you live in a building that has its own water and has its own electricity, that's money that you don't have to earn. When you live in a building that produces food, same story. So what I'm saying is, we are we are carving into this thing called economy, mm. and this economy is almost God on this planet now. Sure. And when you, when you, uh, all the media talks about it all the time. I mean, when all, you know, all the riots in what Egypt and Ukraine and all these different places where the people are unhappy, they're wanting a better economy. Mm. And, but they don't know what that is. Nobody <laughs> knows what that is. So what we're trying to do with this whole movement is decrease the potency mm -hmm. of, of economy to the point nice. where... Uh, I, know, I know you can't do without an economy, but I want it to be what I call an insignificant economy. Nice. So we, we have an economy, an insignificant economy. Mm. And it, it, pay, it takes economy out of the God range and puts it down into the game range. Yeah, you know, nice. economy is kind of a game. You, sure. you want to you wanna be a Donald Trump and make a bunch of money? Fine, it's your choice. But what, by the way we do that, and I think this is the right of every man, woman, and child on this planet, uh -huh. is sustenance of people should not be involved in economy. In other okay. words, to get your water, power, sewage, shelter, food, you know, dealt with, right. you should have access to that via the encounters with the phenomena, not governments and corporations. Right. So then if everybody's got sustenance yep. uh, dealt with, yep. then they can play the economy game. Nice. And economy if they is want significant to. if they even want to. Yeah, sure. And wow, what a it's concept. a crime that people have to make money to get bananas. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. When you can really just take a shit and <laughs> or get water. Bananas. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like that's the thing. It's like uh, so and and we're seeing that it's possible. Yep. And uh, so we're basically cutting into the strength of economy Perfect. you know so it's going way beyond e ecology and ecotourism and eco education and sustainable and green we're going into the way people live on this planet wow i think it's so cool because you look at the word economy which is it's the management of scarce resources so it's supply and demand it says there's not enough so if you want some, then you've got to pay. And then, then we're, we're going, there's not enough bananas, so you've got to pay. There's not enough water. And it's, I mean, it's insane because it's the exact opposite. Economy is the opposite of an ecology. When you go into the rainforest, and there's no, there's no scarcity there. Everything's growing. Everything's thriving. Everything's happening. And what you're doing is saying, hey, let's, let's create our own ecology that we're part of, that we're an integral part of, like the trees are part of it. 
Yeah. And then let's thrive in that and then have, if we want to play this other game called economy, management of scarce resources, supply and demand, we can do that if we want to or we cannot. We can just do art or we can be on the beach or we can be with our children or we can tend to our gardens or we can do yeah, what's on our heart people, to do. It gives people options when you take e when you take their sustenance away from the economy, yeah. then they're, they're going to be okay no matter yeah. what. Then they can decide to have a life or not. <laughs> you know, that's, that's the thing. And, wow. and if there is anything that governments or corporations should do, in my opinion, on yep. this planet, they should subsidize getting people in housing that takes care of them yeah, and wow. the planet. Then everything, would, everything else would take care of itself. Yep. I mean, I don't think you would have people from any country driving airplanes into the Twin Towers sure. of New York City if everybody had everything. If yeah. everybody's got had enough needs of met. everything, then it's a matter of how much, how many TVs do you want to store up or how big, <laughs> of a, how big of a stack of cash do you want? You can't eat it, you know. But right now, cash is food for the family. Yeah. But food for the family, my building takes care of that. Yeah. Heat for the family or cooling for the family or shelter for the family, my building takes care of that. Mm. Water for the family, my building takes care of that. My method of living on this planet takes care of my family. Mm. Stress is gone. Heart attacks are gone. Cancer is gone. Crime is gone. I mean, it affects everything to give people the opportunity to encounter the planet and have a life. So what do you see as the, as the natural outcome for that? And I, maybe even a step before that, like, like the process. So we've got, I mean, a lot of people are now working. We've got you know, tons of people here working on Earthships, building on Earthships, and there's a huge movement that's kind of created around this, this concept, and it's really cool to see it growing. And we could probably fairly safely say that the majority of the planet have never heard of this and have no idea what's going on. When we look at, you know, 7 billion people, it's, mm -hmm. while there's a lot of people doing this, it's, it's really a small percentage. So what's the, what's the process for sharing this with more people? And then really what I'm getting at is what, what do you see as the, as the end result of that? If we, can, if we can have people living in a way where the sustenance doesn't depend on economy, where, where the way I'm living, the structure that I'm in takes care of my basic daily needs and then I'm free to kind of do what I want to do, what, what kind of a world would that be? Um, well, it would be a different world. Sure. Be, <laughs> what do you see? You were, you're taking, imagine the world somehow, and this is how, taking stress out of it, you know, taking greed out of it. Wow. Because then, you know, then you've got people happy, and they'll play music, they'll do art, uh, they'll, they'll create, you know, they, it, in other words, it just opens doors to, a, 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 you know, kind of a heavenly existence on wow. this planet. Right now, everybody, even the wealthy people are stressed out because they're, they're, they've Scared got they're to keep lose up it. this level of, <laughs> yeah. of uh, you know, and, and of life that costs money. Everything costs money. And I'm, see, I, I've been playing the game for a long time, and I'm, after 50 years, I'm starting to see it work. But even the people on our staff, yep. they have gotten Earthships, and they don't have a heating bill, and they yeah. don't have an electrical bill. And now some of them are getting more Earthships to, to share and rent to other people. And they, you know, they, they work because they want to work. Yeah. Most of the people that work with us work because they want this to be a virus. Wow. And, it, and that's what it's getting to be. It is, it's like we're going around the world sneezing on people. <laughs> you know, we're not on a soapbox saying, do this, be <laughs> ecological, be green. We're just yeah. sneezing. Just doing it. And <laughs> we're just living and, uh, and it's, it is a virus. It spreads like a virus uh, it, yeah. if it's right. Yeah. See, if, and it, it hasn't been right that long. And maybe mm. in the last, er, everything was, you know, laboriously uh, took a, a lot of effort to make this work. And, you know, uh, the, the, the toilet system uh, in the early days didn't, didn't work as good as it does now. And nothing worked as good. It, in the last 10 years, it's gotten to be where we put one of these down, people want them. It's yeah, just right. as simple as that. Yeah. We put it down and people come and spend a night in it and they go, oh, I didn't, I can't believe that this is even possible. Yeah. Uh, one of the best comments we got that I took as an insult at first, but then <laughs> I, I realized it wasn't an insult. Uh, people said in one of our airships in uh, New Mexico, they said, we spent the night here and we couldn't tell it from a regular house. And I'm like, what? Yeah. And I'm like, wait a second, that's what you want. 
they have all the amenities. They had flat screen yeah. TV, high speed internet, lights, hot shower, flush toilet. They couldn't tell it from a regular yeah, house. Sure. The only thing is, it's not hooked up to anything. It's yep. hooked up to the sky. So that's when you know we're starting to hear stuff like that. So we know we have we have come of age in that respect. But there's still so much to learn. I mean, we're sure. we're we have been working in the cold climates much longer, and we've got that. You know, you can be. 20 below zero Fahrenheit and walk into one of these and it's comfortable it's amazing. without any fuel and people that blows people's minds yeah. well, we're we're perfecting the the we you know we've done a lot of tropical stuff Nicaragua and Jamaica and uh, you know all over the place uh, Bonaire and but we here is it we're getting to really hone it Sure. We've made a few uh, corrections, course corrections from this one to the new one, yep. but they're small now. And uh, to get the tropical situation so mm -hmm. that the building is cool, mm. you know, as you know, like I just, we just went up the road here to a surfing place over the weekend and, uh, you know, they had a, they had a room, I, I rented a room and, and it was for $40, I mean, uh, it was fairly nice. But I mean, how could they afford to rent that room for $40? They had an air conditioning going the whole time I was there. Mm. And, and it just had to be eating up a lot of sure. energy. Yep. And it kept it cool inside. The toilet hardly flushed. The shower was ridiculous. <laughs> but, you know, here this, our toilet flushes like crazy. And we know every time we flush it, we're making plants. And the shower goes into the same thing. Yep. So then you can make the experience nice. That's what we're doing now is Beautiful. going back and trying to clean up surfaces and we got everything functioning now we're going to make it beautiful and, it, and yeah, the point nice. is what good does it do to make a beautiful boat if it's going to go out there and sink yeah you know i want the boat to float yeah and then when i see that it floats then i'll make it pretty sure nice and having said that i mean these things are stunning they've just got such a unique character and style and flavor and and i've looked at you know looked at tons of videos and looked at all the images online but when you're actually here and seeing it it is it is more beautiful than i could have imagined they're fun. It's 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 they're they're fun to do, and that's I'll bet that's. Uh, but see, the the people that are doing it are are wanting to learn, mm. and see the people that are here. They've they've paid a, a a fee to come here and learn. Yep. And so they're not only paying, you know, they're not being paid to work like normal people. They're paying to work, and and what that means is to work and learn. Mm. So the the quality of the work that they the, the quality of uh, of themselves that they yeah. put into it what they bring they bring their heart and soul into it. Mm. It's not just like being paid a fee per day to work because you need money. I mean, I got a guy in my office who has on his board of things to do. It says, "Do work, get money." <laughs> you know, that's what that's what it usually is. Do sure. work, get money, and then yeah. you spend the money. These people are here to engage in a different threshold of living on this wow. planet. So what's the opportunity for people to get involved? I mean, we've got how many people on, on this little island right now? I'd With say you? we've got about 55 people uh, 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 from out of country. Yep. And then another eight or 10 from locals. Yep. And you know, we're, we're tuning up the local people and getting them involved and so it's kind of a blend and and, uh, and they're getting jobs and they're getting education and they're getting some money and uh, it, the whole thing is kind of growing again with an economy but it's an insignificant economy beautiful so people can and you've got the the academy of course earthship academy so people can come and say oh look i want to learn how to build this i want to build one for myself or i want to build a business out of this or i want to you know whatever they want to do for whatever reasons come and learn how to do it yeah, they come and uh, usually they come to one of these just to see what it's about. Yep. And then, then they'll go, oh, my God, I really want to know. Because, see, we don't have classroom thing. <laughs> I do a, I do a Q and a here. Yep. And, and the plumber does a Q&A and the, and the steel guy does a Q&A and, and Harry does a Q&A. He's the foreman. Mm -hmm. And the carpenter does a Q&A. We, we have Q&As on the things we are doing here. Yep. But we have a curriculum, like a, a you know, 40 course curriculum, wow. a 40 class curriculum that is a month long course and it's an academy and it needs a classroom and it, so it's intense where they, 
there's 40 or 50 people in every, every uh, academy, and they spend half of the time uh, in class uh -huh. and the other half on build. Wow. And then that's when, they, and there's a textbook and everything. The, wow. And there's philosophy, the whole thinking behind where these thoughts came from and why, the logic. Uh, so we do six of those sessions. They're a month-long session. Mm -hmm. sessions. We do six of them at our campus in New Mexico, but then we're starting to make satellite campuses around the world. Wow. And we just did, say, an academy a year and a half or so ago in Uruguay. We built, we built a school, a three-room school for, uh, you know, for the local kids that were in a house. They were in a house, in a bedroom as a classroom and stuff like that. Yeah. So we built a three-room school, and it was wildly successful. I mean, they, they, they just loved it. It changed the kids' whole perspective on school because wow. by virtue of the fact that they're sitting in a classroom, they're getting an education, not to mention the classes. And nice. we're getting ready to go from here. Uh, we're going to Colombia, but then we're going to go to France and B Bordeaux and run. We're going to do an academy there that's mm -hmm. going to build a house for a couple. Wow. So we do the academies whenever we can around two or three around the world as well as at our campus. Fantastic. And then you mentioned, you, I mean, Bordeaux, you, there's a couple that want on Earth ship built and they're not going to build it themselves. They're saying, hey, just They're going to participate. And, but yeah. see, the thing is, with our academy, 50 people, 40 people, and us, 10 or 12 people, we'll have 50, 60 people on site. We can build them a two bedroom. We've done it many times. Two bedroom, two bath home in a month. Done. Wow. You know, they call it, we did one in Canada, three bedrooms, two bath. The guy put it on his Facebook. He called it dirt to doorknobs in five weeks. <laughs> nice. And he's setting up there. He, his first winter, he, they had a big snow drift and it closed in the whole west side of their house, of their airship. Hmm. And he put a thing on Facebook that said, my wife and I are, are uh, trapped in our airship from a snow drift, please don't rescue us. Yeah, <laughs> fantastic. Because he's okay. Oh yeah, indefinitely. Right. He's got tomatoes growing in the hallway, and yeah. you know, and uh, yeah, it's it, he's got everything. He's got power. He's warm. <laughs> That's fantastic. Um, my, I, I think that is, you know, we've really got to the heart of what what this is all about, and who's involved, and how it's all happening, and how it's spreading like you know one of the best kind of viruses on earth right now. It's fantastic. Anything, any last final comments, thoughts, observations, anything you'd like to share before we wrap up? Um, well, I think uh, a, a thing to point out is like this opportunity to do this uh, came from uh, ERI and John uh, creating a situation in Indonesia where land became, they, they made land available and they're, they're they're making land uh, uh, available in a way that is uh, sort of following some rules of ecology and, and trying to, uh, in, you know, you can't do something like this without land. You know, we've got the building, we've got the vessel, we've got the academy, so the people, we've got the yeah. program, but you need land to do it on. Sure. And to, to have uh, a group of people that has joined forces with the government to guide in the development of land mm. and make opportunities for things that they think would be good guides, mm. which I think that's what they've chosen us for, is, uh, is a key thing. You gotcha. know, I, I've told John he should do this all over the world. He, he doesn't want the stress. But, uh, <laughs> but to do this uh, thing of making land available for eco development perfect is is what every country should do i think because yeah. every country usually just sells out to the highest bidder and dumps yep. sewage into the sea and brings in diesel and kills everything and a lot of five star resorts go up and um, the world gets worse yeah but if you know money not being the issue it money is a tool sure but but gathering and hoarding and making lots of money is not the issue i I think what I tell people is our company is is the best on earth at treading water. Nice. That's what we do. We, you know, trees live hand to mouth, 
Animals live hand to mouth. We live hand to mouth. Yeah. We don't store up. We mm. don't. We don't have dividends and 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 banks full of money. We live hand to mouth because we're living off of earth and human equity constantly. Mm. And there's seven billion people on this planet, and there is our there is our equity. Mm. We're, we're, Beautiful. We're we're using people and ourselves as currency, so we never run out. Yeah. You know. So it's you have a certain amount of leap of faith, trust there, Sure, uh, but it seems to be working. It's very different to, you know, certainly the mainstream, or well, not even what people think, but what people have been conditioned to think. Yeah. Yeah. And by um, John, you're talking John Higson. This guy And right ERI here. is yeah. Eco Regions Indonesia. Yeah. Yeah. Right? And yeah, they, they've, they've opened doors for this kind of thing to happen. Yeah, perfect. Fantastic. Mike, thank you so much for your time. I'm so grateful that we could we could make time to get together, and I uh, right. just love, love, love what you're doing. Anybody who's looking to, um, you know, get connected with this, plug into the academy, get an Earthship, find out more. I'm happy to have conversations, and anybody who's interested, I'm happy to pass them on and introduce okay. you uh, to your team. And um, so yeah, stoked with the work you're doing, and really looking forward to spending some more time here on Kanawa this morning. All right. Just checking this all out, meeting some of the. I've met a bunch of the people already, and there's um, you know there's such a passion, there's such a fire in everybody I meet for doing this. It's not like, oh, I've got this job, I've got construction, I've got to build the thing. People are on fire for this. Oh, they, they're just yeah, they are. Like they're, they're, I've noticed that for a long time when people are, uh, myself included, when, yeah. when people are inspired, they're 10 times as strong, mm. emotionally and physically, when they're inspired. Mm. You know, it's like how, how generals used to amp up their army to go to war, you know, with some kind of a speech about freedom or whatever, you know. People are inspired uh, to do this, and it makes it so that we can we can do anything. You know, we're getting ready to go to Colombia and build uh, up on top of a ridge. So we here we have to boat the materials to the island. There we have to boat the materials to the beach, and then take them up a 45 degree slope to the top Whoa. of a ridge and build up there. <laughs> but we can do it's it. It's good for people to be ten times stronger when you get yeah. that kind of work. Yeah. yeah. Thanks All so right. much, Mike. All right, Appreciate nice your time. You. Okay. Let's get back to it. Okay. All right.